Okay. Remember when we were kids, we used to watch sci-fi movies on how the future shall unfold. Flying cars, autonomous cars, robots, machine talking to humans. humans. These things are reality of today. We know that in last two decades, we have seen tremendous technology-driven changes. If, you, if we see those changes and specific to the, our project controls and capital project domain, uh, we see that these changes are you know, driven by three important things you know, here. And these are increase in data mobility, computational capabilities, and user interface and democratization of technology. We need to a little bit understand that so that we can align our career path with the changes in future. We have seen in data mobility, which is actually coming from the fast speed of internet. Internet speed is substantially increased. You know, we are talking about, uh, there was a time when we used to take it, see the data, data bandwidth of, you know, data uh, in kilobyte per second. Now we are into megabyte per second, and then the time will come, we are going, we'll be talking about gigabyte per second. So this means that data from one point of, point of uh, point from word can travel very fast rate. 5G, 4G, optical fiber cables are the example of that. Now we have something called a Starlink also, where the you know the data can be transported directly from one point uh, one point of the world using satellites also. It is and you know project controls we talked about before that project controls is all about data. So when we have a data mobility increasing there's going to have a direct impact on the project controls, the way we perform project controls. Second thing is, you know, uh, second thing is that we have increased in the tremendous computational capabilities as well. In our pockets, the phone, uh, what we carry today is equivalent to supercomputer of 30, 40 years back. Such advancement of hardwares has enabled us to do and also is on a lot of complex data. We know that, that going forward, when we have data computational capabilities, we are going to use a lot of BIM, you know, building information management system, softwares, and tools. So many related technology of LIDARs and real-time progress capturing will get possible because we have a lot of data computational or data processing capabilities. The third item is, you know, user interfaces and commodity democratization of data, right? A lot of you would, would, would not have seen the word where computer screen used to be black and white and there was only the text used for processing. We are into new world where we are getting into new and new ways of user interfaces, very, very easy user interfaces. With support of high data transfer, high computational power, and user uh, ease of user interfaces has led to democratization of technology in big time. And going forward, specific to project controls and capital project management, these things are going to make substantial changes to the way we are doing project controls and capital project management. The future of world will be based on virtual design and construction, lot and lot of you know, data visualization tools, real-time progress capture, and so on. So we are going to see the tremendous changes in the way the management of project, manage, the management of project works. We are going to see the tremendous changes in size and complexities of the project as well. Because once you're going to have more and more tool who can support us to deliver the project, then eventually, by use of those tools, we are going to do more and more complex projects and bigger projects. All these things are going to be driven by the facts which we already discussed. These are acquisition of data, processing of data, and presentation of data to enable 
project decision making and when we come to project decision making the project decision making is largely related with our function that is project controls at the beginning we talked about what is project controls and we highlighted that project controls relate to to the to the you know the the, the processing of project data which in term encompasses data acquisition data analysis and data presentation for decision making now when i am highlighting that the technology is going to make tremendous changes in the way we work with data the way we relate with the data and the way the project relate with this data this means that going forward project controls carriers going to force you a lot and lot many changes and for good reasons to conclude so we are going to get into uh, get into era of highly dynamic and changing technological advancement world which means that whatever we have learned today is not going to be valid for future and we would be required to we would be required to keep on upgrading ourselves over the over the years i have met professional who have secured their engineering or management degree from quite a leading institutes however down the line of their career progression they never updated themselves with what is happening in the, in the in the in the in the industry and with the latest technology tools method and processes on the latter note i met even some professional those who have even not updated their skills such as using new feature of ms office microsoft excel etc eventually such attitude of non upgrading will lead to career setbacks given a time of rapid changing world due to technological advancement here we have no other choice but to train and train and train ourselves in our professional domain and here comes my five takeaways in order to ensure that you do your continued professional development in the best way that benefits you so let's talk about what are these five takeaways and these are on your screen now here five lifelong learning takeaways the point number 1 learning with career in mind again a new word a new word of edtech today you can log into many global website where you can get degree from top institute of from the world but uh, but you need to pay a lot you know of course we are going to talk about cost also in a moment but these things are available at your disposal so the question arises are you going to learn all the things what are, what is available for internet through a tech a tech or educational technology website are you going to go and get many degrees it is practically not possible and often counterproductive as well we'll talk about a uh, counter productivity also in a moment to come i have seen many project controls professional those who have opted for you know higher degrees but no road map in their mind so what uh, what happens to them first they invest a lot of money then was lot of time however because their degrees are not in in their career professional path they don't get benefit out of their hard work so the first and foremost important take away here for you is whenever you do lifelong learning always keep career in your mind don't go and learn something which is just for sake of your 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 own wisdom your own knowledge gaining but it is not helpful to your employer are not helpful in your career path so always lifelong learning should be aligned with the career path that we uh, the, the career path we discussed in our earlier sections your own career path which you have designed for yourself the next item is cost versus return any pro pro professional development has cost and when we talk about the cost cost has two component one is a cost in terms of money what is money going away from your pocket 
And the second is the amount of time you have invested in order to do the studies, in order to develop yourself and so on. When you come to professional development, we have to be very careful about cost element. Why? Because it is the expenses you're going to make from your pocket. Then we have to strategize that if it is going to help in order to get the returns or not. Let me give some example. You are at a mid-level uh, mid career development stage and you, you, you were a project controls manager in decent contracting company. You expect your next promotion to be head of project controls in your organization and you decide to do some professional development. And for that, you decided to do for some, some degrees or certification. You have two choices. Say you have a part-time MBA which cost you in the range of $5,000 plus and you are going to take classes for next two years in order to do that MBA. You have other choice to go for certification. You can do certification like project management professional, PMI, or certified cost professional, or planning and scheduling professional certification offered by AAC, which is a fraction, fractional cost of your MBA degree. What you should be choosing, extensive time computer, you know, uh, uh, time-consuming and expensive MBA degree or a, 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 a short-term certification? The answer cannot be straightforward, but your choice, whatever you make at this point of time, should be alignment with, in the alignment with your career path. You need to do that analysis in your mind before you pursue a particular lifelong learning direction. In this example of project controls manager which you talk about, he should be thinking that, that you know, MBA degree will help him become, uh, you know, uh, next stage of the project, uh, you know, next stage of the project controls career ladder or the head of the project controls, uh, you know, in the, in the company. However, in the real term, will this degree help him to get that? Because the curriculum is not aligned to something that he is going to do his legs in a career path. In, in certain circumstances, a certification may be helpful. And note that is important because even a doing MBA degree or a particular degree is not going to end of your learning cycle. As I mentioned that learning is going to be lifelong. So you have to take bit and bit and bit of learning as you go along in your career path. The next element is don't get too specific. As you have understood your career path, eventually, once you grow on your career path, you become more and more generalist. Having said that, sometimes you can choose a specific career path as well. I have seen certain professionals, those who, those who are like you know, senior project control professional, those who are into uh, position of project controls manager, and some point of time they they opted to go for LLM degree, you know or master of law degree in claims and uh, arbitration, et cetera. Will that be helpful to them? Well, it will be helpful to them provided they want to choose their career in claims and arbitration and so on. And that is a very specific career. Once you get into that stream, you are going to get stuck there because you have to step by step rise in their career. You cannot be when you cannot become journalist, you cannot become general manager, you cannot become vice president of a particular business a business stream in your organization. You are going to get into the claims field, the specific fields. So there is always important choice has to be made, shall we go to a specific or we continue to be generalist? That specific choices has to be made at the time of lifelong learning. Because once you get into a specific direction, it is very difficult to steer away from that specific direction you have chosen at a particular point of time. Now let's talk to the next element of lifelong learning. Here, my important takeaway is that you need to equally focus on productivity tools. Because with given days of technology, a lot of improvement can be done in your productivity which will eventually be helpful to realize your career goals if you are using smart, smart tools, you know. 
It can be starting from use of smartwatch. It can be starting of use of some some productivity apps. You know, scheduling your your own day day scheduling apps. Even the simple things like uh, like you know optimal use of Outlook, and Microsoft Team can help you render a lot of career success. Therefore, in your lifelong learning to do list, ensure that that you have kept the productivity tools as as a specific element to your lifelong learning. Because you become more and more efficient, you can help your organization more and more, you can grow in, in your career ladder more and more, and you can benefit from it. So productivity tools are something you need to focus all the time. Now let's talk about the next element, and that next element is make it as habit. I cannot impress upon a fact anymore that continued professional development is essential for your career success. Therefore, you got to make this as a habit. Do dedicate a specific time of the day for learning every day, if possible. There is a flip side of this thing as well. I mean, other side of the coin, as I mentioned, as you as you make you know uh, the career through out the uh, through through throughout the you know through throughout your career life it is not going to finish today i have seen many enthusiastic professional who want to do all the certification learn all the things today and you know get into get into so much of hectic in learning and professional development and all it is not a good approach learning is something that is not going to finish today so in order to success in long term, you have to make it habit, a reasonable habit that is, more, that is something I will stress upon. Now, these are the, some of my experiences, some of my knowledge sharing on how to take learning, lifelong learning forward. With this, let's jump to the next section.